Hi. In a previous clip, I advised you to see businesses as countries and countries as businesses. Let's expand now this viewpoint to the entire world. How to view the world as a business and what conclusion can we draw from it? Well, the world's total GDP is equivalent to the revenues or sales. The total of the world asset is the world book value and the total surpluses or deficits, the world's profit and loss. Up to now, the world GDP was growing at about 2 or 3% per year, or so we are told. But not only this will no longer be true in the future, as the world GDP shrinks, but as I showed you for the EU, this historic GDP growth was mostly bogus, fake, at least for the last few years. Remember Germany selling coffee makers to Greece in exchange for IOUs that everyone knew would never be paid off? This now requires the EU to take a write-off and maybe destroy its banking system. The same, however, applies with the world. Many countries showed growth by merely making and selling stuff in exchange for IOUs that can never be repaid. Some of them even produce stuff that is still unsold. This applied to the US and China too. In the US though, at least there are periodic write-offs to clear the books. In China there aren't, or at least not that many. China built tens of millions of condos that would never be used, hundreds of millions of washing machines that would never wash, and countless cars that would never drive just to keep the Chinese people employed so they wouldn't rebel. That's how China showed the ridiculous 7 and 8 and 9% growth in GDP for the last few years. Much of it, in my view, was bogus. Well, China must soon fess up to the fraud, as will the US, as in effect with the rest of the world. And this would require a massive global write-off and a big formal admission of decline in the world's book value as assets are written off. But what are the world's assets? What categories are they? The biggest are three. Real estate, market securities, both stocks and bonds, and art. Yes, art is a third category. Check it out. And these three together are almost the entire story. Now, why almost? Because the fourth category Military assets often lets a country grab the assets of another country. This, in my opinion, is only coming in one or two years. We'll get to this in another clip. But let's stick now with the main three, peacetime categories. They feed off each other, so now all three will be knocked down. Now, how do I know? Well, I talk to people in all three industries, and they know it. But of course, since they are selling, they aren't admitting it. If anything, they deny a big decline is coming, so they can sell more while they can. Real estate is only beginning to crumble, with renters not paying their rent and leave it real estate speculators not paying interest on the mortgage, let alone the principal. As for art, you probably saw videos on YouTube in which art dealers, Sotheby, Christie's and others, show clips of private collections by <clears throat> poor billionaires suddenly needing cash who are now showing off their exclusive art, eager to sell it. In my opinion, art has only begun to fall in price, as has real estate as has the stock market. I said begun, and I mean it. All will fall more as the world takes a big write-off when fake accounting and fictitious growth meet reality. But when will this next fall take place? It is often said that history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. Well, in the stock market, it usually does both. And as I said previously, I am convinced we are in the throes of a rhyming repeat of 1937 echo crash. And if this is so, after this lovely rebound we are living through right now, which is now April 9th, 2020, I think the upside is now very thin and we are now in what I call the roadrunner stage, when the suckers have run off the cliff but don't know it yet and are running on air until they look down. So, my opinion is don't look down and sell. Leave the last 200 S&P points to others. Here then are my reasons. The first is circumstantial. Similarities with the echo crash of 1937, which I outlined before in other clips. If so, we still have at least 35% down to go from here. That's a full third. The second reason is conversation with friends who, unlike me, do work. I'm semi-retired. They tell me corporations are battening down the hatches. More CEOs are about to hit the parachute trip code, just like the one at Disney, leaving the cleanup mess with the second in command. But the third reason is my little black secret book. I have a little notebook where for 40 years plus, I have been noting forecasts and opinions of many market participants, some even older than me. 
Very few are usually right. Knowing who is right and when is valuable information. But there are others who are even more valuable. These ones are almost always wrong. At the extremes, they are like money in the bank if you do the opposite of what they tell you. Like whom? Well, I don't want to mention specific people, but I can mention institutions. For example, the, the Economist magazine, who famously said that the world is awash in oil right at the bottom when oil was 12 bucks a barrel, 12. Then it climbed to 100 before it declined from there. Or at the very bottom, Business Week. Now Gunn wrote Death of Equities in 1982, again, at the very bottom of the bull market. Or a famous Nobel winning economist, which would stay unnamed, who is often quoted in the New York Times, who is about 90% wrong, according to my book. Also, two well-known Wall Street mavens whose wrong advice is solid gold if you go against it at the extremes. The majority of almost always wrongs are now saying bye, including some Wall Street mopes. But my signs and omens and my little black book say sell. Sell, sleuth, sell. How much will the market fall? And, and when do you buy? I, of course, can't be sure. It's only my opinion. But if we are indeed in a rhyming repeat of 1937, the market can fall to about 1800 to 1850 in the S&P, which, which, which is a lot below the 2800 now. Fairly fast, or about more than a third, which will bring it to about half of the market top, just like 1937. Now, why don't you develop a little black book of your own? It's not far, it's not difficult. And it's just like having your own artificial intelligence program that tells you who to trust, who to avoid systematically. But if you do this, my advice is never tell those you follow that you do so and never by name. Why not? First, they never talk to you again. But second, they may try to improve poor souls and then they can become 50-50 right wrong and so become useless to you. Better still, is to stay on friendly terms, do it anonymously, and just use the wrong information to fatten your portfolio. Right now, most of the almost always wrongs say the market is going up and they are buying. But the few who are usually right are beginning to sell. I wouldn't mention their name, you can check it out. The world is about to take a big write-off as the US confronts China. To sum up, I leave you with three, three opinions. Remember, not advice, just opinions. First, I think this is now the time to sell. The only exceptions are gold stocks, uh, but even this may soften a little if the market plunges. Second, I'd be looking to buy back good stocks that you sleuth personally if and when the market falls into a pants-wetting blind panic, probably around S&P 1800 or 1850. Third, think of starting a little black book of your own, keeping track of forecasters. Then periodically see who was right, who was wrong, and why. And yes, sure, put your own opinions there too. It'll teach you humility just like it had taught me, and will also improve your sense of judgment and betting record. And yes, sure, put me in there too, just to keep me honest. Please let me know what you think of all this. Put a comment below, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it so they can subscribe too. See you next time. And meantime, thank you for watching.